Well, I'm going to go over Windows Remote Desktop. And in this case, right now, I'm on a Mac, and I'm running the Microsoft Windows Remote Desktop Mac application. And over at my Windows machine on the server, this is what's going on. I've already launched the, um, the Windows uh, Remote Desktop, and I'm looking at what's on my Windows uh, screen. And I'm going to play back this video, so let me go ahead and do that. And you'll notice that even though um, the remote desktop is streaming this part of the desktop across the network, it's actually uh, pretty uh, smooth. Uh, it looks to me like full frame rate, um, and there's no block artifacts or anything nasty going on. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use Wireshark to check out the um, bandwidth. Let me start capturing some packets. I'm going to capture port 3389 is the Windows Remote Desktop port and everything that is coming from the server machine. So I've captured enough packets here. Let me turn this off. And now what I can do is in the Wireshark I can go to Analyze, TCP Stream Graphs, Throughput. And this thing comes up and what I can do is I can go in and zoom in it's got a convenient log scale here. I'm pulling down about 2.7 megabits per second. That's what it takes to send this video across the uh, network. 2.7 megabits per second. Now, with my satellite link, uh, suppose the uh, Windows server was um, say located in a remote location and it was uploading via satellite the uh, video uh, remote desktop. So what I'm going to do is, in between that remote server and my Mac here, I'm going to add an impairment using the KMAX uh, impairment engine. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say that for the uh, stream that's coming down uh, to me, um, and what I'm going to do is this side, this side is my Mac, so data going from the server to my Mac, I'm going to limit it to 500 kilobits per second. That sounds about right for a satellite. You don't want it to be too expensive. And we're also going to uh, limit the rate going in the other direction just for the sake of completeness. And so now with that rate limit set, we're going to see what happens here. Okay, so this is um, less has less performance. Uh, you can see that it's got a, a stuttering frame rate, and um, the video quality seems to be uh, maintained at a very uh, high quality level. It doesn't turn blocky or anything, but uh, what we're seeing here is basically sort of unusable video because the video rate is so low. And in fact, if we were to go into uh, Wireshark here and do a capture, and then I will, let me stop this here. The uh, user interface has also gone down in uh, quality since I throttled the bandwidth. So going back to my Wireshark, the throughput is indeed around 500 uh, kilobits per second uh, for the uh, remote desktop protocol streams. Uh, what I can also do is uh, for this video, let me temporarily turn off the impairment so I can get back to um, reasonable GUI interaction. And if I set the zoom to half, we'll see how it works now. After I turn back on the rate limitation, it looks like it may, might be um, 
we still get quite a bit of stuttering. Still full quality in terms of the image resol resolution. There's no blocking, blockiness or JPEG artifacts going on. But even with this kind of postage uh, stamp sized video, it um, looks like it might be one fourth the uh, real time frame rate. So that is, uh, that's a summary of the performance you can expect when you're looking at a video playback with Microsoft Remote Desktop. Now another thing I wanted to show is what happens if you play a very high resolution video stream on the uh, remote uh, server side uh, under a condition of constrained bandwidth, in this case 500 kilobits per second simulating a satellite link. Now if we play the video what you'll notice is that in this case uh, the frame rate is very low but also um, Microsoft uh, Remote Windows Protocol has added what appears to be uh, essentially a, a JPEG style compression uh, where you can see the jaggies and the blockiness of that results. And what happens is if I freeze the video, as you can see over the course of maybe half a second or so, the video uh, comes into focus as the server sends more information to make the image look better and better over time. Uh, so, one, uh, one, once again, if I were to uh, go back to no throttling of the uh, remote stream, then it's pretty fast, and you can see it's still actually... Um, it's dropping back to some of the, uh, some of the uh, JPEG style image compression in order to keep up with things and now it's getting a little better so it's adapting over time but then if I re-enable the bitrate throttling it takes a while to adapt and this is one thing that needs to be tested uh, with uh, client and server uh, protocols to make sure that if there is a sudden change in the bitrate that the client and server can kind of negotiate with, with each other and drop back to uh, a lower bit rate. I'm going to go over the performance characteristics of VNC. Um, in this case I have a Mac which is running the server. I'm running the native VNC that's built into the Mac. You go into the preferences to enable it. And right here I'm on my Windows machine and I'm running the Tight VNC Viewer. And right now I'm looking at uh, what's on my Mac desktop. I'm running this uh, looping animation in VLC. And if I go ahead and play this, so here on my Mac we have VLC running playing this uh, video and streaming the uh, the changes in graphics that you see over the network to my Windows machine here. And actually, you can see that it's, um, it's quite good. It's uh, full quality. There are no JPEG blocky artifacts. And it's also, um, except when it loops around, and um, it also looks like pretty much a uh, full frame rate. Now, if I go in and see what kind of uh, bandwidth this thing is using, uh, I can start Wireshark. And in this case, the... Um, the source port from the server is going to be 5900 and I'm selecting packets coming from my server. So if I capture a few packets and then go into statistics and see what we've got here. I can zoom in and we see that it's using almost 4.4 no 44 megabits per 
per second. So this thing that you're seeing here, it's the result of 44 megabits. So that's pretty high. So what we might want to do is simulate what would happen if the uh, server was sending this uh, video and graphics over a satellite link. And in this case, I've added the KMAX network impairment emulator between the server and my client here. And if I go in and I have uh, two rate limiters, one for each direction, and each rate limiter is set to 500 kilobits per second. If I now have the data actually go through the bandwidth throttling, we can now see what's happening. And in fact, it looks like it's come to a complete halt, but it's um, at this point, uh, we'd expect the client and server to adapt to the new lower bit rate and recover and sort of gracefully degrade. Um, what we're seeing here is it's pretty much unusable video. The frame rate has gotten down to one frame every few seconds. Uh, we, st we don't have any block artifacts, so it's still showing each frame with high resolution. But yeah, it's pretty useless. And this is a rather small uh, video as well. So it kind of shows that for, especially for VNC, uh, it's really not suitable for viewing video uh, over a remote desktop. Um, if we look at what's going on, uh, the, the side on the right here is my server, and so data is going in, in this direction. And if I open up the rate limiter, I can see that what's happening here is the server is sending packets across. And because we have a rate limiter, not all the packets can get through. So the packets build up in this input queue. And when the queue level gets past 64, then this rate limiter will, will drop packets. So it works just like a WAN entry point. And every so often, you will see a, um, a packet drop. But for the most part, uh, not many packets have dropped. It's uh, generally the case that it looks like the server has been able to adapt to the new lower bit rate. So in, in a way, that's, that's good that it's, it's adapted uh, rather than just completely failing outright. I'm going to demonstrate another remote desktop product. This is Go to My PC from Citrix. This is a cloud-based solution, uh, which means that when the desktop is updated, uh, an update stream is sent from the server up to the cloud. It bounces off the cloud and then goes down to the viewer. So what we have here is on the server, I have a Mac running El Capitan. And on the Mac, I'm playing this uh, looped animation. And as the desktop updates with new graphics from the video, the Mac sends the stream up to the cloud. Then it comes back down to my Windows PC, where I'm running the viewer. And in this case, there's a, a little server application to install on the Mac, and also a viewer application to install on my client PC. And then it all connects together. And so what we're seeing here is um, actually pretty good quality. Um, it looks to me like it's about full frame rate. And the image quality is also very high. There's no block artifacts or blurring going on. Now I measured the uh, bit rate of the stream coming from the server. And it's actually remarkably low. It's, uh, in this case, around 800 kilobits per second. Uh, that's not too bad. Um, but what we're going to do is simulate uh, sending that stream over a satellite link. And the satellite link will have a bit rate of only 500 kilobits per second. So I'm going to use the KMAX impairment engine. And the server is on the right-hand side sending streams to the left. So I'm going to turn off my bypasses here in both directions. And in both directions, I have a rate limiter. And I've set the rate limiter to um, limit the bit rate to 500 kilobits per second. And so, well, let's just see how, how things are doing. So it started off at about 800 kilobits per second. And we're knocking it down to 500 kilobits per second with the emulated satellite link. And it's actually uh, not so great. It's, we're, we're looking at a lot of stuttering. 
um, a lot of drop frames, so it's not really adapting very well. Now, if we look at what's going on in the rate limiter itself, what happens is the, the server is going to be sending packets up to the cloud through this impairment. And it looks like the uh, server side is not adapting to the lower bit rate. And it's continuing to send um, more packets than it can fit through that channel. So it's, it's trying to send more than 500 kilobits per second. So what happens is for this rate limiter, there's an input queue. And if packets come in that are faster than 500 kilobits per second, they build up in the input queue and eventually they drop when they reach uh, 64 packets. And that's what's happen happening every time you see the drop flash. And so the number of packets dropped keeps going up. So what we're seeing is basically the inability of the server to adapt to this uh, lower bit rate, which is not good. And in fact, if we go over to our KMAX engine and look at some statistics. I am going to uh, say first look at bits per second. And actually the bits per second that are coming in that the server is sending into my KMAX impairment box, it actually deviates uh, above 500 kilobits per second. It, it goes up to six or 800 at a time. So on average, it's sending more than 500 kilobits per second. Now what's coming out of the box is strictly limited to 500 kilobits per second because we're, we're th intentionally throttling it. Um, if we look at a bit more detail, we can uh, show packets. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zero out all my counts so that we can see how they increase. And in fact, you can see uh, some other statistics show what's going on. The rate limiter is dropping packets every so often as the input queue fills up. And it's going to be dropping packets. Um, the, the time to drain will eventually increase if we gave it a large uh, queue size. So eventually, if we say gave it a allowed it to build up a queue size of 256, um, eventually it's uh, going to build up so many packets that uh, multiple seconds of packets are going to be um, appearing in the input queue. So we're up to we're up to three seconds worth of packets that have been uh, backed up in the input queue that are waiting to drain. So so in 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 summary the. Uh, the go to my PC is not able to adapt very well to this lower bit rate um, over a simulated satellite. And if we were to go back here and um, turn off the impairments by bypassing our impairment engine, it should theoretically snap right back to the high quality that, um, that it's capable of. Um, so that's the demo for go to my PC.